What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your perpetually hyper host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge, switched it up on ya. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright guys, this odyssey length story is called, Don't Pay on Time? Alright, let's play that game. I know this is long, I feel like it's worth it though. My significant other worked at a private school in South Korea, also known as Hagwon. Hagwon teaches all kinds of subjects, and this particular one taught English. They would hire native English teachers from around the world to come to Korea and teach English. Although I've never taught English in Korea, I've been in Korea long enough to be very familiar with the laws, practices, and heard numerous horror stories. I also am good friends with a Korean lawyer that specializes in business disputes. So I met my girlfriend, she was on her second contract in Korea at a new school, as the first school she worked at, the owner retired and shut it all down. That was actually a pretty positive experience. He always paid on time. When he informed everyone he was shutting down the school, he'd of course pay out everything agreed upon in the contracts. But also any unused vacation time, sick time, plus he would double that year's bonus as a thank you. My girlfriend told him in her contract she had a free flight home at the end of the contract but didn't plan on using it. So the owner of her first school told her that's fine, he'll just pay her an extra $1,000 as that is what the flight would have cost anyways. So my girlfriend found a second school to work at after her first school shut down due to the retirement of the owner. However, her second school had some warning signs that I was concerned about. Three foreign teachers, all are on their first year contracts. Typically, if a school is good, you'll get a few teachers who are willing to sign on to second, third, etc. year contracts. Not this case, which I felt was odd, especially for a school that had been around for years. The school had a pretty low student population count, just under 100. I've always heard you want about 50 students per teacher for cash flow, etc. reasons, unless you're a high-end school. Also, apparently, payday was supposed to be between the 10th and 15th. They said, in case of holiday or weekend. Oh well, not my business. This was still very early in our relationship. Two months into our relationship, my girlfriend is annoyed. I find out her school has only paid half her salary and will be paying the other half in one week. This was a massive red sign to me. I gave my girlfriend advice what to do at this point. She ignored me and said, they're just having a little cash flow issue. Some students haven't paid on time. Okay, whatever. Two months later, we get invited to a dinner hosted by the owners, uh, husband and wife. I got off work early and headed on over. Red sign number two. Both husband and wife drove very, very nice cars. The wife had a Tesla and the husband had a very nice BMW 5 Series. Off we go to dinner. I get to dinner. My goal is to learn as much about my girlfriend's school's owners as possible, so I jump into pleasant conversation. More red signs to follow. They have three kids, two young ones and one older one. The two young ones attend numerous hag ones for various things. This is expensive, and their oldest is attending college in America, also expensive. They live in the rich part of town in a very large apartment, which I was able to find out is financed aka high payments. They're about to start a new marketing campaign to get more students, as numerous students have dropped out lately. They know they don't have the student population to maintain what they need to maintain. Red signs are going off in my head like this place is heading straight for a freaking cliff and everyone needs to jump ship now. Not enough students, owners have a ton of bills, they won't be staying in business long. Again, not really my place to say anything at this point, but I took a mental note. Next month, my girlfriend's pay is late again. Let's just say she kept telling me to mind my own business each time I tried to give her advice. This went on like this for three months, and finally, she went an entire month without getting her full salary. She got about a third. Final red sign. Girlfriend comes over to a letter on her door of her apartment for eviction. You see, in Korea, it's common for the school to pay the rent and provide housing. Apparently, they haven't been paying rent. Girlfriend is mad, she's broke, and about to become homeless. The time for action is now. Remember when I said I knew what to do? Pro Revenge starts here. I had her check her national pension, tax records, and healthcare information. 
all of which are legal requirements for her to maintain visa. Even though her school hasn't paid those things for months, she's required to pay them. I'm fuming. This school is royally screwing over my girlfriend and that's not cool. My girlfriend is distraught because she's a very prideful woman that now has to ask her boyfriend, that's me, for help. I pull into the savings and pay up all her requirements and set up regular monthly payments to ensure that even if her school doesn't pay, which they haven't, she can maintain her visa. I then ask her a favor. I want to sit down with her co-teachers. Experience has taught me she's not the only one getting screwed over. However, do you know what the beautiful thing about this is? You see, the Korean government is sick and tired of schools bringing over foreign teachers and screwing them over. In the past, those teachers who have gotten screwed up have gone crawling to their respective embassies, oftentimes homeless, penniless, with nowhere to turn because their employer didn't have the resources to meet their contractual obligations, and many schools were getting shut down, especially on the third complaint. I tell all her co-teachers to keep going to work. They have to to maintain their visas, and I would get back with them in a day or so. I also am good friends with a Korean lawyer that specializes in business disputes. Remember that part? This lawyer and I go way back. I've known him for the better part of a decade. He helped me navigate my divorce, I gave him a couch to sleep on when he was going through his divorce, I once loaned him money, he paid me back, and we both really liked helping each other out. Now I'll spoil the fun for you. No, this lawyer, my friend, is not going to be suing the school. But, so I called up my friend and said, hey, I want to go drink some soju and talk to you about something and maybe hit you up for a favor. He goes, sure thing. We go to our favorite barbecue place, start pounding back the soju as I explain the situation to him. He's getting madder and madder. He's upset because he feels like this is giving those foreigners a bad view of his country. And he hates Koreans that make Korea look bad. And I ask him to help file claims with the labor board. With the goals of getting them paid, getting them a letter of release so they can switch to D10 visas and find a better school, or leave Korea altogether if they choose, and getting the school shut down. Now, my friend wouldn't be suing the school as a government-appointed lawyer would be. Since this is a labor board issue, he really doesn't need to do much. However, when a Korean lawyer who specializes in business law calls the labor board to file a complaint about a breach of contract with an English teacher against a Hag-1, that carries more weight than if the teacher goes through it by themselves. Also, I feel like it helps the communication and eliminated potential language disputes. This would be compounded by the fact if each one of those teachers filed separate cases against the same school a few days apart. He agrees to help. Strike one. Girlfriend goes up first. My friend sits down with her, collects what evidence she has, calls the labor board. Complaint one filed. Bam. Girlfriend goes to school. Her boss is angry. Her boss approaches her and asks, How can you betray me? My girlfriend said, Pay me my money. Boss asks, How can you do this? Girlfriend said, She smiled and said, This is just the start. Strike two. Strike one is still underway, with a labor board coming down the necks of the Hag One owners demanding payment. Demanding to know why my girlfriend hasn't been paid. Friend calls the labor board, same case manager, he files the case number two against the school. The next day, my girlfriend and strike two teacher are called into a meeting with the owners. They want to work out a payment plan and give them a letter of release. Girlfriend says, full payment of all money owed plus bonus for completion of contract prorated for months completed or no deal. The owner tells her that's not possible. Girlfriend says, that's fine, full payment or no deal. Strike 2.5. My friend finds out what the Hag-1 owners tried to do. He advises my girlfriend and her co-teachers, if that happens again, do not engage in any negotiations. Hand them his business card and tell them if they have a settlement offer, they can call their lawyer. He gives business cards to all teachers. Strike three. Bam wham, open a can of worms, folks, we are here! Co-teacher three goes to my friend, he calls the labor board, and guess what? Same case manager has gotten three valid labor disputes over breach of contract from the same school all in a matter of two weeks. This school is now not only a liability to its employees, but the Korean government. The hits land. Labor board apparently called the school, demands that all salaries, pension payments, taxes, 
health insurance premiums, and rent will be paid in full within 10 days or the education license and business license will be revoked and the school's assets will be seized and sold to pay the teachers what they are due. In addition, creditors, etc., who are also very likely owed money, will be paid. Left hook lands. My girlfriend said the next day at school was crazy. The owners were freaking the F out. Their entire lives falling apart. They had government lawyers so far up their butt they couldn't even sit down. That's when the owners decided they would pull all the teachers into a meeting and work out a settlement. Keep in mind, at this point, the school owed approximately $20 in back wages, health care premiums, pension payments, and future liabilities on top of whatever rent was due for all their payments, which, by this point, were all under separate eviction proceedings. The owners offered each one of them $1,500 in cash that day if they would be willing to drop the labor dispute. Each one of the teachers pulled out my friend's business card and said, Any settlement offer should be made to my lawyer. I so wish I could have seen this happen. The owners grab the business cards, look at the teachers and go, You have a Korean lawyer? They answer, Yes. You all have the same lawyer? Yes. Can you imagine having three separate legal issues from three separate people and finding out the same lawyer is representing each individual suing you? <laughs> How that must feel. Will you take the 1.5 now and we work out a payment plan? They all say, Talk to my lawyer at the same time. They leave the meeting. That night, all four of us partied. They all felt like complete bad booties. Their owners now knew how truly F they were. We had a pretty good party that night. The end was near. The owners dodged a bullet for now. The labor board was really, 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 really angry. According to my friend who was following up with the labor board, the process to resolve this was being fast-tracked and the labor board was deadly serious about shutting the school down if they couldn't pay by the deadline. Apparently, the owners were trying to secure a loan to pay the teachers and keep the teachers employed in the school open. They filed for extensions and got some more time. They did pay out partial salaries, which helped the teachers get by day by day. By this point, my girlfriend had already been evicted and was living with me and I was supporting her. She was loaning her partial payments to her co-teachers who didn't have the same support. Sir, it is time to drop fat boy. It was a Thursday. My girlfriend had just arrived at work. Yes, she was still legally required to work at a school that wasn't paying her. When shortly after she started, a bunch of Koreans arrived in suits, posted up notices. 15 minutes go by and one of the Korean men in a suit steps inside of the classroom, introduces himself and says all the students are going to be bused home for today. All the kids are loaded onto the buses and each one given a notice to give to their parents. My girlfriend is instructed to wait until all the students are gone. Process takes about an hour and then my girlfriend is told she is to go home and the labor board will contact her for the next step. They step outside and there is a moving van with a few Korean men waiting around. My girlfriend calls my friend the lawyer who calls the labor board. The school had been foreclosed on. Their assets are going to be seized and sold and my teachers will be paid out of the proceeds of the sale. If the school doesn't have enough assets to cover the salaries, payments, etc., the government will seize any assets of the owners to pay. The teachers now had a judgment and the courts are going to collect and pay out on it. The dust settles. Two months later, one of the co-teachers opted to fly my girlfriend home and the co-teacher that decided to stay in Korea found much better schools to work at. And my friend calls me all excited and he told me he just got off the phone with the labor board. Enough business and personal assets have been seized and sold to pay all the teachers what they are due. Each teacher will have $300 deducted for the lawyer fees, not for him, he did all this for free, but for the government lawyer who handled the case behind the scenes. Also, the owners have been permanently barred from ever opening a business and the education board had barred the owners from operating in any school setting again. No idea what happened to the owners after this, but life goes on. My girlfriend and I took a nice vacation on her back pay and put the rest in the bank. It felt good to win. Okay, wow, that is a magnificent story. Um, I feel like this belongs in nuclear revenge because he absolutely destroyed those owners. Like, wow. I absolutely admire this dude and the lawyer, especially the lawyer, he did it all for free. And this dude for helping out his girlfriend and all the other teachers, 
and his girlfriend for giving her back pay or uh, her partial pay or whatever to another teacher that needed it more than her. Everyone was helping each other out so great and it's, it's so great to read about. You know, when you're, when you're reading about kids throwing switches at other things and um, parents trying to steal dogs and all this crazy mamma jamma, this was a good read. This story's called, My Teacher Flooded His Neighbor's House With Sewage So His House Wouldn't Be Flooded With Sewage. So this is a story my carpentry teacher told us the other day. So my teacher lives in a three-story house, not including the basement, and up the street is some condos. And one of those condos is a family with children. One day, my teacher's wife goes into their basement to do laundry. She smelled dirty diapers. I guess dirty diapers have a distinct smell. She recognized this isn't normal and called my teacher, explaining that it smells like dirty diapers. Their kids are all grown up, so it obviously wasn't coming from them. My teacher thought about it and speculated someone up the street was flushing dirty diapers down their toilet. She said to his wife, Don't flush the toilet, don't use the washer, don't use the sink. He proceeds to call the person that put in the sewer system of his house. They're friends, so he was willing to help him out. What the guy told him to do was plug every drain in his house with some sort of drain plug they sell at home improvement stores for this kind of reason. He even had to take his toilets off and plug the drain on them, all except for his third floor. Wait for it. Once he did that, according to his friend's instructions, go to the third floor and flush every toilet. He said when he did this, it was so clogged up in the pipes, water started to come from the drain of his bathroom and he had to plug it up. Nothing was happening until he heard this giant whoosh noise in his pipes. A couple minutes later, fire trucks were showing up to the condos up the street and he knew it worked. The reason why this happened was since his dumb booty neighbors were flushing diapers down the toilet, the way the sewer system works is that it goes down the stream of elevation. So, coming from the condos down the street, then it comes off at an intersection and goes to his house. The diapers were caught at the intersection and actually going into his house. Just the pipes luckily, unless they didn't take the right action. So, by plugging all of the drains, except the third floor, the liquid would need more pressure to travel up to the third floor, or by flushing all of the toilets and introducing a lot of pressure into the system, because it's at a higher elevation on the third floor, it shot all the clogged up sewage back upstream, even though it's going upstream, remember, pressure. All of these drains were plugged, including the sewage system going down the street. So there's only one way to go, to the neighbor's house and into their house. <laughs> oh no, my butt fell off. That's why you don't flush diapers down the toilet. They expand. Actually, don't flush anything other than what should go down there, or your house could be covered in crap next time because your neighbor knows what he slash she's doing. Oh my. <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh no. I don't know how to feel about this. Okay, this is a fantastic story, okay? But like, what if the, the condo people didn't know any better? <laughs> you could have just told them <laughs> not flood their house with sewage. <laughs> Wow! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.